everyone. Uh, this is, I'm Phil Healy, the Public Access Coordinator for NORCAM, uh, North Reading's Public Access Channel. And I'm here with Ed McGrath, uh, the pretty much the North Reading uh, Recycling Committee. Well, no, I'm not the. <laughs> well, you're on, one yeah. of the. I'm uh, active. One of the active members yeah. of the North Reading uh, Recycling Committee. Yep. And we're here to talk uh, pretty much recycling, uh, both general and specifically for the town. So, Ed, well, let's. Anything you can tell us right off the bat about. Recycling in general. Well, we've we've got you know we have the curbside program. Um, we can go over some stats if you want real please, quick. Yeah, yeah, one of the things we're recycling rates about just under twenty four percent. This this year, this fiscal year, we usually measure it in fiscal years, and uh, it's down a little bit. Part of it is, there's a lot of contributing factors to that, um, but we're about 24 percent as a recycling rate, and then um, what I what I've been tracking for the last over 10 years now is what we avoid in the tip fee. So we don't, we don't pay anything when the recycling gets, leaves the curb. We're mm -hmm. done with it. We only pay for the hauling of it. But on trash, we pay a tip fee at the incinerator, and it costs $70 a ton right now, this year. To get rid of the trash to burn the, To burn yeah. the trash. So I track you know, using recycling as a way to save money. And this year... Uh, we've been averaging about eighty nine thousand a year um, for, for the tip fee for the tip fee saving oh, savings, savings. savings avoid yeah. avoided tip fee oh. and this year we're at uh, about fifty thousand saved already and since I started tracking this we like last uh, we surpassed last year a million dollars in avoided tip fees last year and you've been tracking so, it for two years since February since fiscal year oh six when I oh, came, wow. rejoined this committee recycling committee back then so well, there's nothing to shy away from no it's 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 a way to kind of control the costs yeah. you know and it's just um so we're lucky right now um other towns are paying to have their recycling processed uh anywhere from i've heard upwards of 60 dollars a ton some places some some uh -huh. will get into the contamination and stuff but yeah. uh some towns have been told by their Comp their vendors that they're not taking the recycling anymore because there's too much trash in it. So they're having to <laughs> ship their stuff out of state at probably a higher cost. Wow. So. Which is, and we'll get into uh, for this program a little big, big chunk of it. That is a problem. Yeah. Like the, the, the mixture and, of trash. And, and it's, a, it's a big problem that just came about, really exploded, if you will, this year, last summer. China, which was the destination for a lot of recycling materials in, in the United, from the United States, um, basically closed their doors. They called it the China National Sword is the term that was being called. And this was recently, right? Last summer, yeah. Oh, okay. And so they, China basically did not renew import licenses for these manufacturers that were reusing the material. Oh. Um, and they wanted, they would only accept materials that had a 0.5% contamination rate. And the challenge here is that the facilities in the United States can only get to 3% or 3 to 5% contamination. And that contamination is... Uh... It could be food, it could be just trash, you know, yeah. just didn't get through the process. So basically, when you, you, put, your cur you put your recycling out at your curb, the, in, our, in North Reading, it's JRM right now. JRM takes it to their facility, sorts the materials, the plastics, the metals, the glass, the paper, the cardboard, bails it up, and they sell it to either uh, other manufacturers who are going to reuse this. It becomes a raw material for somebody. Um, but, it, you know, they do the best they can, and so they get this, you know, they have to work to get the contamination level down. China's really put the clamps on it. Um, they, one of the reasons, it's, it's basically, it's macroeconomics, and mm -hmm. one of the issue is China's um, been able to do some supply domestically, so they don't have to import as much. Oh, okay. So there's, you know, it's the competition, but they've also been pushing the contamination because they feel people have been dumping on them. Well, yeah, so, isn't that a, that's also a big uh, issue with electronics with China, too, just right. the pollution uh, yeah. in cities and rivers right. pretty much filling out. Well, and but uh, just but let's oh, say sure. what we got, the plastics, metals, and paper and stuff, and what happens is now the costs for the companies, the JRMs and the waste managements, <clears throat> they have to hire more labor to sort through stuff because people try to recycle. Yeah. Wishful, they've been called wishful recyclers now is how they're being called. And they've got to buy new equipment and they slow their lines down and it just it increases uh -huh. their cost and, and those costs are being passed on to, to municipalities. We're, right now, North Reading's fortunate. We're not yeah. paying anything, 
but our contract's coming due, and I suspect and change, I yeah. suspect that's going to change. Well, and also that's why we're here today. That's why you're here today, uh, because we want to educate the people as best we can. Yep. I think that's that's important, right? Yep. And hopefully right. this will be a great. Educa it's a, already been an education for myself <laughs> and people around here, because uh, I brought some of my own yeah, material. Yeah, and we, we checked that out. We're going <laughs> yeah. to have a long talk afterwards. Yeah, well. So anyway, we just you know we're talking. Um, I guess the best way we were talking is to describe it as a supply chain. You know, that can or bottle or whatever you're putting in your recycling bin at your home is part of a raw material for somebody's business down the road. And um, kind of like the farmer picks a piece of fruit off the farm, say an apple out of Washington. Yeah. Why, you know, you're the end user, you know, and it's just it's quality there. It starts from there and what happens in between. But it, it all starts at the at the curb and what the type of quality we put it what we put into the um, recycling bin. So you know what we do want to go in the bin is you know containers, uh, plastic, metal, glass containers, re emptied and rinsed. You know basically food waste is a big contaminant. Yeah. That's a big problem. So when they inspect these bales, they find. A lot of food waste or whatever, like they're gonna, they're gonna, can of soda or whatever, even that or just, just something else. Yeah, even the saw, it just rinse it, rinse uh, yeah. it. Not the like it's you know, you yogurt know, or yeah, like rinse, that. try to get it out. That's yeah. the type of food waste that gets going. Um, so we're you know we want we want containers, and I this is the big one. People pretty much understand paper. You know when we talk paper, we're talking you know junk mail, uh, office you know paper from a copy machine or a printer. Um, um, magazines, catalogs, those type of things. That I think pretty everybody pretty much understands that. And cardboard, yeah, yeah. you know. Um, so, you know, cardboard, the big issue is breaking it down. It's, you know. Not just putting the box yeah, itself right, in there. Just, yeah. Right, just, but it's the cardboard, so flattening it and just putting it out. But the, the challenge is, and I, someone said this to me, uh, I heard this woman at a conference a couple of years ago, and it just, it just changed how you look at things. We've been telling people to recycle plastics one through seven yeah. for years, <clears throat> and we need to unscramble that egg. And so you need to think about it. It's containers. These facilities that sort and bale the material are equipped, this woman said, to handle paper, cardboard, and containers. Mm. And I went, wow, that's that's. You know, so I've changed how I try to do outreach and stuff. Oh, yeah. So you need to think, is it a container? You know, is it a container, and then is it made of glass, plastic, or metal? If it says yeah, if it's yes to the container, it can go in the recycling bin, rinse, empty it, and rinse it. You know, a half, half-filled bottle of water doesn't help anybody. It huh. creates a mess. Empty the bottle, um, leave the caps on. That's not a big issue. But just because it has a symbol on it, like one of the, that uh, triangle yeah, with the arrows triangle, with a little recycling. number in it, that's not really as relevant anymore. Um, someone asked me one time, <clears throat> can I recycle these plastic hangers? And yeah. it has a number on it, had a number four on it. And I said, is it a container? And they said, no, it can't be recycled. Not in the, not in the curbside recycling program. Well, even, and I guess to go with that, we, we have to get out of our head. I think this is a big problem. Like, I think people will see recycling as just another form of trash and not necessarily as a uh, commodity. Right. Which is kind of what it needs it's, to be seen. It's a commodity. Yeah. yeah. That's well, why I'm saying you're the first step in somebody's supply chain. Um, you know, you're providing a raw material. Like, there's, they estimate that an aluminum can, a beverage can, will be recycled within 60 days, it'll be back on the shelf in a store. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, you know, so all this stuff gets it, it gets recycled. There was a time mm. when Harry Potter was all the rage when it was first coming out that the, you know the paper we were recycling in North Reading was being made into the covers of the hardcover Harry oh, Potter really? books. Yeah, so that's just something we tell our kids that night. Yeah, to yeah, it's make impressive. Make them feel better. Yeah. So, uh, but that's a, this is what it's like. You need so you need to be a little vigilant. I say is yeah. what goes in there and and do it right because that's going to help control the costs and stuff. Um, so we're just, you know, what we're, that's what, we're, you know, you need to th look at it as a container, rinse it and stuff, and we're going to talk about yeah, some in a little actually, bit. Actually, yeah, we'll go through. Uh, so we'll look, talk about containers. Through? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's well, this one. is the one that blew my mind because going back to numbers, you talk about the numbers, and I don't right. know if you can put it right here, right on the X. There you go. But this, and this is white, so it might be blown out. But uh, yeah, this is a styrofoam container, and there's actually 
there's a num there's a recycling thing right around if I can follow my finger right there, right there for number six. Number six. You don't need. <laughs> I feel bad we're making Jason zoom in on this, but there is a number right there, and that is when I grew as I grew up. Number six. There you go. As I grew up, that was the number, and that was a symbol that said it was okay to recycle it. Yep. That was like it was okay. You can just throw it in there. Number six, right here. Right on that guy. On a, on a cup. From, a styrofoam cup. From number a six. local. From a local. 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 local we'll get that uh, out. Number six. This is styrofoam. Uh, EPS is the technical phrase. Yeah. Expanded polystyrene, that right but that's not recyclable. Um, oh, really? Because that's yeah, where we have to get them. away from the numbers. Um, this 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 is a totally different type of plastic, and it's it's, it's it, there's not a lot of market for it, and it's expensive, and you know sometimes if I you did wash it out, you it wash was, it out, but the food waste of, yeah. if this was food waste that becomes a contaminant, yeah. but this would be considered a contamination in, in it, the MRF. Oh, okay. The oh, MRF. which and let's actually to so that terminology. MRF is MRF. a recycle uh, uh, material recovery processing facility. MRF, MPF. And that's what the companies like JRM, JRM uh, runs. take our curbside stuff, yep. they put it into this machine called a MRF, and that gets the MRF, MRF's basically a plant. They empty oh, the, the recycling, is, yeah, they yeah. put it up on conveyor belts, and it goes, things get sorted, and it's above my pay grade and science knowledge, so how they do it. But it's, you know, with machinery, with magnets, yeah. lights, and they sort through everything and get the glass ones. What ends up at the end is there's... Uh, pods with all the different materials that they, that's when they start making their bales and they ship and stuff. out and they and as a business they have to make their uh, they have to make their end of the bargain they have to get their you know their money out of it and they sell it to other companies but the quality matters yeah and that's I mean and so something like this back to the supply chain they have to basically what they have to do is there's a, a on the conveyor belt there are people standing next to the conveyor belt picking these type of things up and throwing them yeah you know, and the because other. The, oh, actually, yeah. Let's get let's into. Let's go. The other big this, one. So this is like the English language, like I before E kind of exception. Yeah. Like it's a container, but it's not styrofoam. Is no bueno. So the other big thing is plastics. Ah, here we go. This is, you know, any type of plastics. Plastic shopping no, I actually bags. Actually, put this inside out so we don't get the. You know, but this is for, uh, or puppy, puppy pads. Yeah, but this so, is this is a yeah. uh, plastic. It's it's called film. Uh, technically, um, a lot of different types. There's the bread bags, the bags. A news. If you're still getting a newspaper delivered, the bag, oh, the newspaper yeah, comes the in. Okay. You buy a case of water. That plastic wrap around the water. That's yeah. that's plastic. Sh dry cleaning bags. Oh, so around the like the water. Yep. Uh, that yeah. That is even okay. It's like a film. Yeah, yeah. They, the plastic film, and it, this stuff gets caught in these conveyor belts at the MRF. Oh, they have yeah. to shut the MRF down. They have to shut the line down, and people have to climb up along the conveyors to cut this off all the all the uh, conveyor belts and Poor stuff. Guys. It's a mess. So this is this is definitely that's a this is probably the, this and food waste of one and two on contamination. The biggest guys. Yeah. So that and actually and I've seen I, this before, and, and I, then you probably can we go took into this. It. I, I asked. I didn't bring a put that down prop, right there. but what we see the big problem is people use these. Trash bags to bag the recyclables, yeah. put them in the recycling bin. JRM has now stepped up its enforcement. They won't take that. They'll they were, leave it. They were brutally uh, beat you. No, they will not. No, they, the, not that they, I know. they don't no, take they don't. that. Um, at a MRF that I deal with in Bill Ricca, Waste Management MRF, anything that comes in a bag, it yeah. gets thrown in the trash. They don't even open the bag. Well, I actually have to tell someone, I live at Edgewood, and I think I told you this story. Like, someone was coming with a bag, and like, and I just learned from you, um, I think it was at one of the select me meetings. I'm like, oh, no, 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 you got to rip that up. And they looked at me like I had three heads. I'm yeah. like, oh, I'll help you out. Yeah. And just, well, it's also, it's just, if you don't have a bin, and you just, like, put it in and treat it, alas, like a bit of trash. Just empty the bag. If yeah. you want to collect this inside your house in a bag, that's great. But when you put it in your bin, empty it out yeah. and reuse the bag or toss the bag. Yeah, yeah. Use it for trash. Okay, but that's the biggest one. Here. So So yeah, and what oh, this is actually another great example, right? The other there. issue is, you know, we we're talking about if you're in a business. Well, a business or, or even home with a home, shredder, yeah. that's not gonna make it through the conveyor. Yeah. Um, so because waste man I right. I've been checking they basically say you can put this in a paper bag, but when it starts going through the sorting process, the bag's going to either get ripped or open up, and this is just going to blow all over the all over the place, and it's never going to make it through the process. Um, so shredded paper should go in the trash. It just 
you know, we, the, it could be recycled, yeah. but not curbside. We just don't have, you know, North Reading, we don't have the infrastructure to take these, these other items as, as such right now. So, well, And that'll be a, a question for further kind of examination, like yeah. the other process for recycling beyond curbside uh, recycling, like you were talking about with the, those clothes hangers, yeah. using them in other organizations, or even yeah. just like a container, like you have a recyclable, like you have the same uh, right. water uh, container yeah. that you use, or right. even like a bottle, like say, you know, this bottle we had, I don't know if we brought this up earlier, but even one of these, if you want to reuse these, tear off the, the label, use it over and over again for water, uh, to contain water or yeah. something else in your home for like salad dressing or something yep. else. Yep. I mean, there's plenty of stuff you can use this use this for. And this is actually recyclable anyway. That's recyclable just as yeah. it is right now, right. It's just, it's empty and that's fine. There's, no, there's nothing in it. That could be recycled. You no. said salad oh, dressing. Oh, salad dressing. Rinse yeah. it out. Rinse oh, out. yeah, there you just go. Just rinse it out. And I mean, I, I will tell, okay, I will tell you though, Phil, it's a secret. Don't let anybody else know this. But peanut butter jars, I, you know, I've had people stop me on the street and ask me about peanut butter jars. I throw mine away. Yeah. I just think the, well, just the, too crazy the, to the amount of water you have to use to clean it, well, I just, I'm like. Well, that's a question I, I always have, like, in my hippie mind. Like, am I wasting <laughs> more water cleaning out these yeah, Well, that's, what I, that's how I feel. I just, yeah. it's, it's, it becomes a resource. I'm looking, yeah. like, it's not worth it. In the water war, which is coming, yeah. this will be. Yeah. It's, <laughs> I think it's here. Well, no, time. it is. Yeah. Well, there are some towns in Africa that are actually buying yeah. water or cities, not just, like. Well, Crazy What's going town. on currently in North Reading with water is, you know, that's a hot topic. There too. we go. Here we are. Very, yeah, yeah, the other thing, too, is like this the, paper plate. Oh, yeah. that's I was going to ask This about paper that. plate has a coating on the top. It's water resistant. Okay. And oh. another example we have here is uh, the, co the, ba the packages that um, paper you, for your printer at home, the, the packaging for the ream of paper. Well, this, is ma this paper is made to resist water to keep that ream dry so it doesn't jam in your machine. So in the recycling process, they put all the, the paper in water, this mucks it up. So this can should go in the trash too. Yeah, fair enough. But this, and the same with the paper plate or even, oh, so paper, plate. even paper plates because of the coating on oh, it. The coating the wet, on the, oh. It's got the coating to resist moisture. But there's so many of them. I know, but it's, <laughs> it's to resist moisture and they don't, yeah. they become a contaminant. So this is wow. the type of thing China's that's, looking yeah. for. You no, know? no, that's a very good, and this actually, yeah. And this one, we brought this one out. Um, so we brought this one out. First off, the plastic wrap has to come off. This mm. is a plastic film. That would put that in, basically put that in the trash. But if you can see inside, there's a little bit of food waste. Mm. The food has to get out of there. That's another, that's the other major contaminant. And this has a number one on it. That's very recyclable. So, oh, so that's actually one of the, the number ones and number twos are the actual ones they're getting money for right now. Oh, okay. Um, some money, not, the, the markets so are way the, down. Do you know the number system or is it kind of arbit not I arbitrary? I don't have a memory. It's, it's, uh, no, it's arbitrary. It reflects the type of um, plastic it is, the plastic oh, okay. re resin it is. So yeah. and one, twos, uh, one is peat. P -E don't I, I, P -P -E -T I don't have, yeah, P-E-T, yeah, it's, it's, it is, and it's like a long science name, a chemical name, and same with HDPE, oh, I see. Yeah, the, a milk jug, yeah. the, the, the gray milk jugs, well, those are number twos. Well, that's another thing I want to ask you, because I, I believe I got an email from you regarding milk jug, or milk cartons. Oh, originally. yes, so yes. So what, that is something that literally yeah. this past week, right? Well, it, that's, or the that's the nature, that's a good weeks. example of how things are changing. Um, mm. The carton, the, we're talking about cartons. There are paper cartons like orange juice, lemonade, uh, half-gallon milk cartons, and they have a, like a gable um, top to it. Okay. So the paper in there is high quality, and the, the manufacturers of those cartons have been trying to get them recycled and pr facilitate recycling of them. Um, but it's it's one of those fringe ones, and hmm. it's great to you know the more you can recycle, the better. But what happens? Uh, we just have been confusion lately. Um, we heard JRM wasn't taking it, and then we heard they're going to take it and not going to take. So we're basically saying, don't put it in your bin right now. So it's, it's like a, we, we need to see get get this settled and resolve what. So we know exactly. Yeah, because you know, you know, are they going to take it this week and not take it next week? Hmm. And I, my feeling is, let's try to keep it clean as possible. We're not talking a huge uh, part of the 
you know, how many milk cartons does people actually put out on a weekly basis? I venture to guess some people don't put any out. Oh, one so, or two, depending on the size of the family. Maybe, maybe yeah. Or they're cereal, using yeah. a plastic half-gallon yeah. milk thing. So. Oh, that's true. So I, I just say, the almond I just, too, right, I just say right now, just put it in the trash. Because I'm looking at it. You know, we were talking about you know the avoided tip fee. Yeah. We're measuring that in tons. So is you know, that what the it that's what the for? Tip, yeah tip fee? No, tip ton, fee is oh. we pay by the ton. I'll pay by the Everything we track. Uh, is by the ton, and so when I think of a hundred milk cartons, I'm thinking a couple pounds yeah. maybe. I just it's like the amount of effort. Um, worse, North Reading's a small fish in this pond here, yeah. so it's just I said let's just I so I passed the word when I heard they're doing doing it. I passed the word on a our, um, our Facebook page and yeah, I uh, just yeah. said we need to just don't put the cartons in there. It just it just right now it's. It's too complicated. So. Well, no, it's an interesting. You have to follow that wave because <laughs> yeah. I mean, there are all these companies trying to make a profit off of uh, the business they've right. got involved. And yeah. It's kind of the sad, but I mean, yeah, that's oh. So <clears throat> I guess what else we got? One, yeah, we're, we're so talking. Guy, you hear box board, yeah. cardboard, these packaging, food packaging. There's all types of this stuff that you buy at the store. This is all recyclable. Um, this is probably made from recycled. Um, oh, it might be. Yeah, this, yeah it's it paperboard carton, recycled with paper. Um, you know, some 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 um, packaging now. You'll see this some type of direction on it is a, actually a how to recycle. Oh. Um, this is an yeah, There's also a how to recycle to tell you the different components. Yeah. What is capable of being recycling? So, um, you know, recycle this with the paper. The plastic window really doesn't matter. A lot of that's made from like a cornstarch, so it just dissolves when it gets into the water. But, you know, this is the type of stuff, tissue boxes, cereal boxes, pasta mm -hmm. boxes, cracker boxes, there's it's all a, oh, sorts like, of stuff. Yeah, and this is cracker actually, I don't, boxes. I don't want to show, too, I mean, you already know what it is, but yeah, this is the, like, yeah. same thing. And you yeah. just kind of, um, it's usually like, oh no, it's too bad. I'm horrible at this. So like that, and you just flatten it out. <clears throat> See, and that's the thing. I mean, you were talking about earlier. You just have to take a box as is and just flatten it. And each uh, cardboard box has its own. Yeah. You either have a thing you just flatten or you can just rip yeah. one part. Yeah, we yeah. were talking before, like, well, the, yeah. boxes. Um, somebody, in. somebody in the room here does a lot of shopping online, like a lot of other people, I'm and gets a lot of boxes. I'm killing brick and mortar industry. That's what um, I do. So anyway, but the, the key thing is flatten the box. Just flatten it. And um, if you one online company, which will... Uh, you get those pillows that instead of used to get the plastic styrofoam peanuts to protect oh, your product, okay. now you're getting these plastic pillows. They can be recycled. Oh. They go with the shopping bags and the other plastic film stuff we were talking about to the supermarket. Yeah, yeah. That stuff gets, those, that film, the supermarkets take that, that stuff gets recycled by this company. In this area, it gets recycled by this company, Trex, the manufacturer. Not curbside. Yeah. You bring it to the stores. They got the ba the barrels in the front of the stores for plastic bags. That gets recycled by Trex. They make yeah. manufacture plastic lumber, plastic oh. fur furniture. You just they have a van. You just they, throw it and in. they take that. So this. Cool. So what happens is, stop and shop. For instance, they'll take their bags. When those bags up front get filled, they bring them out back. When their truck trucks are coming from their warehouse. They're heading back, they throw them on, and from the warehouse they get recycled. So that's pretty much the system that people use, that the various businesses use. So that stuff Fair does enough, get made. Yeah. So the big one, one question we always get is what to do with pizza boxes. Yeah. They're made of cardboard. Um, <clears throat> again, it's food waste. And this one, not bad. I, I put this in the, if I was, the, the, I'd put this in the recycling bin. But normally they come with, um, they've been doing a lot lately. They have like a plastic right. underneath. They just, you know, you got to make a call. It looks yeah. really greasy. Um, you think it should go in the trash, throw it in the trash. Would I, if that was the case, I would just oh, rip, yeah, off, yeah, yeah. rip off the clean part. I put yeah. this part in the recycling. I put this part in the trash. So, you know, it's a, it's a call. There's no real, they just, you know, it's how much food waste is on it. If you're not sure, you're probably... If you think it's questionable, throw it in the trash. And as a young filmmaker, to recycle a pizza box, you can make it into what we call a reflector. Pretty much you put a white piece of uh, like paper in there or a reflective, like maybe even, um, we actually had one here. Uh, actually, we think we still have it here. But you could take, uh, what was it, foil, tin foil wrap, put it on here, and you use it to reflect outside when you're shooting uh, a piece or uh, taping something outside. 
to get the sunlight to reflect on uh, someone's face or an object we call fill light, F-I-L-L, -L, not my light. But you can use that and just use and, that as a reflector. And a small pizza box with yeah. a foil for your t overall tan. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> so, so 101 uses. So, yeah. So, I mean, that was the, that's the basic, you know. Oh, that, I really should have cleaned out that box. That, yeah, I know. Um, so, anyway, so that, that, that's kind of like you got to make a call. It's all about quality. Yeah. It's about what you're doing. I mean, the recycling committee, we're waiting. The, the town is putting the contract out to bid. We may have a new vendor. We may have still have JRM. we got to find out what's happening. And what's going on it, it, but it's it's challenging we're trying to offer um, for some other stuff that can be recycled but not curbside uh, we have the special collection in june we've been doing it we went to a is lot of trouble for... to name this this is we started doing it, it was for fluorescent lamps okay uh, mercury containing bulbs and lamps um, we were doing bat rechargeable batteries the nicads not regular not al rechargeable. alkaline batteries go in the trash yeah they, there's been no heavy metals in alkali batteries since 1994. The state says you can just you can put them in the trash. Um, if you if you really want to recycle them, they cost about a dollar a pound it's to not horrible, recycle. Actually. No, but if you when you think from a town standpoint, yeah. you know a dollar a pound are worth going in tons. It's two thousand yeah. dollars a but ton. For her, for one you person. Know, yeah, one person. The battery yeah. the batteries plus stores. There's one in Woburn that I deal with a lot. Oh, do they? they and they'll collect. They'll take those batteries too. If you don't I want to wait till June, oh. batteries plus stores will take your rechargeable batteries, the NICADs, nickel metal hydrate, your lithium batteries. Mm -hmm. They will take them and they will recycle them, and there's no charge for that. Most That's of, mostly, awesome. there's no. The only thing they really charge for is the double A size lithiums, but it's oh, okay. it's not a lot of money. It's it's short money. Um, oh, that's great. You know, so but we t we do the special collection. We've been doing that. We've doing we collected. We started collecting. We do propane tanks. We take tires. Mm -hmm. You know, oddball stuff that people have, and we're just trying to help them move it out. We've always operated on this philosophy. Uh, I first joined when we I was with the group that started the recycling committee but I didn't start at the town then you were just part of it I was yeah. part of it back in the early 90s and <clears throat> you know the thought was give people the opportunity to do the right thing and that's what we tried to do you know we try to give people the opportunity great, right? we're trying to we're trying to offer household hazardous waste collection twice once in the spring and once in the fall so what again. would you um, call hazardous uh, hazardous waste, waste would be like a solvents Oh, stains, okay. like cleaning material. Um, Oil-based paints. Oh. Um, pool chemicals. We see a lot of those. So the containers at the end of, the season. of it, or just the They're remnants of a container. What's left in the oh. container? Somebody might have a quart of a tank, quart of a can of uh, whatever, and they yeah. need to, they want to get rid of it. It's old or whatever. Oh, okay. <coughs> so oh yeah, because you can't. Re you shouldn't really dump it in. No, in no, the, you shouldn't uh, dump it at all. It's, yeah. And, and so we, we, you know, there's a whole list of different types of chemicals, fertilizers. Um, you know, we don't take, you know, so we take that, we've been doing that in, in the fall, and the, Andrew Lafferty, who just left, wanted, was, was about to do it twice a year, and I'm not sure if that's going to happen this year. Yeah. I think it would be great if we do it, because I get the calls, what do I, I'm moving, what do I do with all my stuff, yeah. I can't wait till October. <laughs> um, latex paint, you know, if it's, you, you got to buy a paint hardener, there's products available um, at, the hardware stores, kitty litter is also works, or some type of absorbent. Stir it in, let the paint dry. It gets hard, it gets heavy too, but it gets hard. So you oh, and then wow. you can throw that in the trash. Huh. Once the paint is hard, you can throw it and just bag it and put it in the trash. One hundred and one uses kitty litter. Yeah, yeah. So well, and is there a list too online that people could look at for like hazardous <clears throat> or just any of these? Yeah, uh, the there, dates from yeah. The events? Um, is it on the North Reading yeah, website? Yeah, you should check the North Reading website. Um, it's, and that's been moving that around. Yeah, there's we have a one on the committee. There's one for the committee and there's one for the towns, the, the recycling, and there's stuff there. There's stuff what what is acceptable for hazardous waste yeah. and uh, that type of thing. We'll so, put a scroll yeah. right underneath. And then, um, you know, that's it. So, you oh. know. But that, you know, that's, that, that's what we're trying to do. You know, we've been trying to, you know, active, you know, Keep on keep on top of what's going on and help do outreach and help educate people and uh, what goes in the bin and you know I'm, I get a lot of you know I get a lot of comments on Facebook and when are we going why don't we do single stream versus dual stream or what are we doing yeah. you know don't we do single stream we're well you know technically we're dual stream okay according to the contract it's dual stream so you you, you should sort your paper and cardboard separate from the containers at yeah. the curb 
but then JRM will show up with a truck and they'll dump everything into one truck. Yeah, because they've only... I know, and I'm like, and my feeling is just do what works best in your house, yeah. put it out, just try to maximize what you put out on the curb. And that way, when, you know, that that's the best you can do, that's fine. If you're used to doing, I do dual stream. I just have a system and yeah. I don't, it would, I, that's why I keep doing it. Just whatever works in your house, keep doing it. Don't worry about what happens when JRM takes it. It's out of our hands. You know, it's up to them. Um, but but make sure you put it. You know, put stuff in there that doesn't belong because they're going to start. They're going to take it out. They're going to be policing that. Um, and they won't even take. I'm sure they'll even like disregard your whole bit well, if they see a bunch yeah, of stuff. Yeah, they, they might. They just leave the whole bit if they yeah. don't have time to go through it. You know, it just. Uh, I mean, I work where I work. I see what people put in the recycling bins. You know. Pet food bags, like you showed it. You know, yeah, yeah. pet food bags. I've seen scales, fans, scales. yeah, uh, toys, yeah. Uh, a broken camp chair. That stuff, yeah, it well, might, that's... it probably could get recycled somehow, but it doesn't get recycled in that curbside program because that like your bin like is gonna yard, that truck that took your re re recycling is gonna empty out on the floor, mm -hmm. and they're gonna push it onto these conveyor belts, and it's gonna start sorting. That stuff gets pulled out as trash. And that's the residual. There's a, a lot of these companies now, these MRFs, they're charging towns, basically a processing fee. They have some fancy names for them. Um, but uh, I just, they, you know, the residual is part of it. That's a big, big expense. Big portion of the, the calculation is how much is what, you know, winds up being trash. And they'll, they, they'll charge you for They charge you. There's a whole, it, yeah. there's a whole formula. Based on the value of the materials and oh, wow. stuff, it's so uh, it's a, it's it's a little imperative. complicated. Yeah, yeah. and you, so it's you know a town I work in now we're paying about thirty dollars a ton for recycling, but I know other towns are paying upwards of sixty. Yeah. I know one town I think as it goes told the Murph said we're not taking your recycling anymore and they're shipping it out of state. So and because of the uh, Chinese what was it, the Chinese national sword. sword, yeah, that's driving us. It's that, driving that's and driving us. We we'll have to find other markets yeah. to yep. uh, hopefully and, it won't be and on what a they're finding barge. and what they're finding. The companies are finding these other markets know that they're kind of um, they oh. they don't they not have a lot of leverage in the negotiations, no. so they're not getting the price. Our... They're not getting <laughs> yeah. the price they want at these other outlets. So, you know, the thing is, you know, just it's keep it clean. You know, rinse, empty and rinse your containers, and mm. don't put we call them tanglers. You know, someone call I got a call from a woman a couple of weeks ago. Her husband wanted to re, was going to put her, a garden hose in the recycling bin. And she said, I don't think that goes there. He goes, yeah, they'll recycle. They'll figure out something, what to do with it. <laughs> no. That's a wishful recycler. And yeah. so what ended up happening, I told her she won the argument, you know, throw it in the trash. Yeah. Those, are, those things get tangled up in the conveyor belts, uh, VCR tapes. Also, um, you're talking about two or three different types of material. Yeah. And like yeah. a hose, like metal. Metal, uh, rubber. Rubber and you some know, plastic. plastic. Probably some plastic. Yeah, at the end. You know, and then, you know, someone was saying like VCR tapes. <laughs> we probably all have those Disney VCR sure. tapes in our basement. Oh, actually, the containers, though, those plastic but containers are those. No, there's too, many, the there's too many different types of plastic in a VCR tape. Oh, not, but not in the tape itself, but in, like, the clamshell plastic container. That, I'm talking about the VCR you're tape about the that you put physical, in the machine. Yeah, yeah. People think, oh, right. this is plastic. We yeah. can recycle it. Well, there's too many different types of plastic. No, you can't. And they don't want it. Nobody wants it. And but what about the clamshell? Like, there is the container that the VHS, not the actual physical I know what you're yeah, yeah, yeah. With but, that... I'd imagine that much. I, uh, I hear different things. Oh, yeah. So, no, that's, you know, I, mean, I hear that's maybe no. Know. And if you don't know. Yeah. But, like, you know, one of the things, here's, a, here's an example of what's changing. Yeah. You know, so in this special collection, we were doing rigid plastics. And I would tell people, we're talking about those plastic pity, uh, chairs, uh, patio chairs. Uh, I used to promote it by saying if your daughter is graduating from the high school this year and that little dollhouse you bought when she was five mm. is still in your backyard, you can recycle it. Well, okay. now the market has gone so bad that nobody wants rigid plastics anymore. Uh -huh. So the five-gallon pails, um, those those yard yard toys, uh, those like a little patio plastic furniture. shovel or something. Yeah, yeah. all the not the plastic, but the bigger things. You know, the slides oh, okay. and stuff. And, oh, I see, like and, the play school. -y play school type stuff. Of, yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's no not market. For, there's no against. market. There's no market for it. So yeah. then nobody will take it. It so wow. winds up winds up going to the incinerator. So that was the type Which of thing. Which can't be healthy for anyone. Well, you know, <laughs> yeah. and then, so, I mean, that's the type of thing we were trying to, you know, we're trying to give people an outlet on the special collection. Yeah, Here's yeah. an oddball thing. It doesn't, you know, let's we'll give them a chance. We can get, we get these recycled. Mm. But right now, and then that might change. You know, so who knows? 
price of oil goes up, and you know this is all macroeconomics, and we yeah. just we're just riding along the. The flow. Well, I mean, thank you for coming by. And if there's any other websites or anything else, well, I would say throw, we're yeah. on Facebook yeah. and uh, North Reading Recycling. Just come and like us. We will publish. We you know post uh, reminders about uh, trash being delayed because of a holiday or upcoming events or if there's something really. It's how it's how we make a quick announcement. So um, I share it with a couple other um, sites, uh, Facebook sites. Facebook groups and but if you want to stay on top of it and Sunday night if you're wondering if you have to put your trash out on Monday night or Tuesday you morning you know I usually post something when the holiday is coming up or what's going on so um, I encourage everyone to go there and like us on, on Facebook and sure. help us get the word out. So. And it's usually um, Monday evening for Tuesday pickup Tuesday, right? right? Right. Cool. Yep. Well, yeah, uh, Ed, thank you for coming. And if anyone has any other questions about it, they can go on the uh, North Reading website, northreadingmass.gov. North Reading, yeah, northreadingmass.gov. There's an email, recycle at northreadingma.gov. That gets forwarded to us, um, and we'll try to answer the question in the, as timely as we can. All right, cool. Keep, uh, don't be a wishful a recycler, although that isn't a horrible place to begin. Just uh, think about what you're recycling. Check the material. Make sure uh, food waste is gone. And no styrofoam. Empty wrench, no styrofoam, um, no. It's got to be a container. No hangers. It's got to be yeah. a container. No wire hangers. No wire hangers. No, yeah, bring your wire hangers back to your dry cleaner. Go yeah. reuse them. And find ways to recycle things that you have and reuse stuff. And as uh, I'll end with one thing you actually showed me a uh, clip from, from one of your, I think you went to a conference and yep. someone was speaking. I forget the woman's name, but she just had, you showed me her, the still she had in her, uh, on the, Oh. projector yeah the powerpoint presentation just stop buying crap yep and that's one of the bigger things so leave it with that thank you again for watching and if you have any questions feel free to contact us as well 978-664-0501 and you can ask us if you want to uh, participate in a program that educates the town or you just want to gripe or just have your own show let us know and thank you again ed thank you phil all right appreciate it take it easy mm -hmm.